friends, welcome to the old Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise, and again, I am not a robot. Last week I did a silly video where an AI bot wrote my script on snake tongues and how they smell. The educational content was just stellar. But hopefully you guys found it to be a bit of harmless fun. Today I'm going to actually explain how snakes, like fingers, my carpet python here, smell. And uh, he actually smells really bad right now. He just pooped and he keeps farting. But I'm talking about how they get smell, how they how they perceive the world through scent. That's what I'm talking about today. And guess what? They don't smell with their tongue. <laughs> You're skeptical, I can tell, and I think I understand why. Look at just about any snake facts lists or articles online and I can almost guarantee that on there somewhere will be snake smell with their tongue. Textbooks, care guides, documentaries. I've made that statement before. Heck, pick one of your favorite experts on this platform and I bet you almost anything that they've said that snakes smell with their tongue. And sorry, but it's not correct. You might be thinking who the heck I think I am to be contradicting these knowledgeable folks. Just stick with me and I will explain. Before I do, I want to extend a special thanks to Dr. Kurt Schwank for his help on this video. Dr. Schwank is a professor of ecology and evolutionary biology at the University of Connecticut and has been studying squamates for decades with particular focus on their tongues. I downloaded one of Dr. Schwank's research papers through academia.edu and was prompted to include a reason why I was downloading the paper. Later that day, Dr. Schwank reached out to me and offered his assistance, which was completely unexpected and so cool. Dr. Schwank, you rock. Thank you so much for your help. Okay, so back to the shocking, scandalous revelation that snakes don't smell with their tongue. Now, the tongue usually has a significant part to play in gathering olfactory information, don't get me wrong, but saying that they smell with their tongue is kind of like saying, I taste my french fries with my fingers. Not this guy, these. The fingers are very helpful in getting the fries to where I can taste them, but I can still taste my salty, delicious, deep fried sticks of potato without them. Same goes for snakes. Relating to their tongue, I mean, don't feed your snakes fries, eh? So if snakes don't smell with their tongue, what do they smell with? Well, their nose, just like you and me. It's not terribly sensitive, but what the nose smells can often be the trigger for those iconic tongue flicks and engages the use of a far more finely tuned sensory organ behind their nose, accessible only from the roof of their mouth. This is called a VNO, Vimero Nasal Organ, or Jacobson's Organ. This is a complex paired olfactory organ that is packed with highly sensitive chemoreceptors feeding a bunch of information to the brain. The VNO is not unique to snakes, by the way. Lots of animals have one, even Oscar. But most of them don't quite match the snakes in the sophisticated way that they use theirs, and this is where the tongue comes in. Tongues in general can do a lot. Depending on the animal, it helps manipulate and swallow food, provides a sense of taste, vocalization, both just noises, but also complex language. It can be used for heat regulation, picking popcorn kernels out from between your teeth, as a comb, even as a tool for long-grained hunting, and more. But snakes don't use their tongue for any of that. Instead, they have evolved a tongue so streamlined and perfectly suited to its primary task that they gave up an arm and a leg for it. Okay, I feel like I need to address that joke. I started writing a draft for this video almost two years ago, but it wasn't coming together quite right, and I didn't really get far past a rough outline and a few paragraphs, so I set it aside. I've got a bunch like that. <laughs> Snake intelligence. <clears throat> But included in that draft were a few jokes that I wanted to work into the script. In particular, I was very proud of that arm and a leg joke, and it had me thinking I was rather clever. I like dumb jokes, what can I say? And then, about a month after it was written by me, Zafrank released a True Facts About Reptile Tongues video, which was awesome. But guess what was in his video? My joke. The nerve, right? The only reasonable explanation that I can think of is that Zafrank somehow got at my data and stole my joke. I was cordial in the comments on his video, but I vowed to never let that happen again. So good luck trying that now, Mr. Frank, because I use NordVPN and my data is safe and secure. NordVPN is the best way to protect yourself online. It's super easy to use. And with barely the push of a button, you can virtually pretend to be in another country, opening up a whole new world of streaming options. I've got an affiliate link for NordVPN down below. Well, actually, currently below me here is 
grass, but in the description. And until October 17th, you can get 68% off the regular price and three months free. A two year plan for NordPass password manager is also available at a 33% discount. Now you can secure your data, you can watch more content, safely organize your passwords and save a bunch of money. How cool is that? Please go check out the link in the description below and find out how my friends at NordVPN can help protect you as they did for me. Okay, back inside, it's starting to rain again. This is an expensive camera. <laughs> Hurry up, stop it. Because they are constantly blowing silent little raspberries at you, snakes very helpfully give us lots of opportunity to see their tongue. The slender cylindrical shape, deep forks, and the speed they wave it about all willy nilly gave rise to myths that snakes' tongues are venomous and they can sting you with it. Other early naturalists posited that maybe they use it to flick dirt out of their nostrils. That is, of course, not true. And to be honest, in my opinion, how they actually use it is way cooler than either of those and a lot more complicated than just flicky flicky. The primary function of a snake's tongue is to collect samples from the environment. The tongue has no chemoreceptors. It serves no olfactory or gustatory function itself, smell or taste. But what it does is act as a mechanism to deliver chemical information from the outside world to the vomeronasal organ. And that is where, like I mentioned earlier, the highly sophisticated, ultra-sensitive chemoreceptors hang out. You may already be aware of this, of course. The Jacobson's organ is not something new and is probably common knowledge, especially amongst reptile folks. But just like the snake smell with their tongue statement is inaccurate, the common knowledge of how they actually deliver that chemical information to the VNO is wrong. Yeah, I know, I'm such a pain, dispelling myths and spreading truths. Sorry about that, eh? Before I get into that, I want to talk about how snakes use their tongue to gather information before they deliver it, because there's some really cool science stuff going on. Now, snakes aren't the only animals that use forked tongues to explore their world. Lizards, like my tagu jub jub, are constantly tongue flicking, but they are generally sampling surfaces in their path to deliver information to the VNO, often actually touching it with their tongue. Many lizard species, by the way, do have taste buds on their tongue, so they are both bringing in scents to their VNO and tasting with their tongue as they go. That rhymes. <laughs> But snakes' sampling ability takes things to a whole other level. Let's take a second to compare lizard tongue flicks with a snake's. What did you notice? I bet it was the fact that snakes flick their tongues a lot more and way faster and add a little flourish by wiggling the tips up and down. They also tend to sample the air itself rather than physically connecting with objects. This allows snakes to collect many, many times more chemical information with their tongue flicks than a lizard does with theirs. And the secret is in the oscillation of those long tines of their forked tongue. Did he just give me a kiss? He did. Aww. These oscillations create little pockets of rotating air on the top and bottom of either side of the tongue. These vortices pull in air from the left and right and force it upwards and downwards, creating twin columns of air on either side of the tongue. The snake will then move the tips of their tongue through these columns and collect all sorts of interesting molecules. They pull those molecules into their mouth to deposit the goodies they collected into the vemoronasal organ. By the way, that little hole in the snake's face that the tongue goes through, you know, the one that gives them a little cute kissy face, the, little, the one that makes them look startled all the time, that is a rostral groove. Those of you who watched my snake faces video way back when might recall that I could not, for the life of me, find out what that hole was called. Rostral groove. The organ has two openings on the roof of the mouth, left and right conveniently matching up perfectly with the left and right tines of the snake's tongue. Each fork will flick up and into the VNO, depositing whatever scent particles they collected. Is what you've probably been told. But guess what? Once again, we have all been deceived. Snakes and lizards directly depositing odor molecules into the VNO was first introduced in the 1920s by a scientist named Bomar and quickly became accepted as the method snakes use to feed information to their Jacobson organ. And it makes sense why it would be. It all seems to line up so perfectly. 
It's kind of similar to the myth that hognose snakes pop their toads with their rear fangs. It too was established as fact based on preliminary observation and a reasonable conclusion and just kind of stuck. It was proven decades ago that hognose snake fangs are nowhere near long enough to pop a toad, but it's still today widely accepted as fact. Similarly, it's been decades since the work was done that clearly shows that snakes don't stick their tines into the holes in the roof of their mouth to deposit the scent into the VNO. And yet you will hear it explained that that is what they do over and over. So here I am doing my little part to dispel the myth to the, I don't know, 500 to 1000 folks who will see this video. By the way, I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. So here's what actually happens. Hopefully we'll be fading to B-roll of a model or drawing I suckered my dad into making. What? On the Wait, floor. Hold on. What? You didn't read the notes? What notes? In the script. Like on the Google Doc? Yeah. No, I didn't read the notes. Well, you should. It's why they're there. <sighs> on the floor of the snake's mouth are tiny grooves. The bottom of them contain salivary glands, and when the mouth is closed, they create two sealed chambers that just happen to each have an opening to the VNO on the top. The tines of the tongue rest neatly in these grooves and remain stationary while saliva is pumped through the gland on the bottom, rinsing off whatever molecules are on the tongue. And... <laughs> And that jet of snake spit is what delivers odors from each tine to the corresponding opening of the Jacobson's organ, not the tongue itself, which is now freshly cleaned and ready to head out and collect more smelly molecules on the next flick. How cool is that? Now, you might also have heard that snakes are able to detect which tine of their forked tongue collected more scent, and that they use this to determine which way they need to go to find prey. If more smell comes off of the right tine, they move towards or away from the right, depending on whether it smells like food or danger. This is called edge detection of a chemical trail. I was very worried, dear viewers, that this fact would be another common myth that I would be dispelling today, as while researching this, I came across a 2008 study that concluded that this is not the case and that the reason snakes splay their forks and that the reason that snakes and that and that the reason that snakes splay the forks of their tongue is to increase the sample size that snakes get on each tongue flick. In that study, scientists severed one of the two vemoronasal nerves in rattlesnakes. If the concentrations between the left and right tines were important in edge detection of a chemical trail, then the denervation should disrupt the rattlesnake's ability to follow their prey's trail. What they found was that there was no difference between those snakes that had only one of their VNOs intact versus those that had both intact. They concluded that snakes do not smell in stereo, so to speak. But just because something was found in a study does not necessarily mean that it was a good study. Scientific studies are really complicated and properly deciphering them to identify the quality and accuracy of them and the conclusions that they get is not easy and something that I've been learning a lot about. Proper scientific studies are really written for scientists. It can be really hard for most of us to distinguish between a study with strong scientific rigor and poor scientific rigor or pseudoscience. Misinformation or even disinformation can easily be accepted as true because it was in a study. We've seen way too much of that in the past two and a half years. Anyway, as Dr. Schwenk explained, there were several problems with the methodology used in that particular study. Not least of which was that a simple Y maze was used. One puts a scent at one of the branches of the Y and you see which branch the snake chooses. That isn't a test of trailing ability. It was just a test of being able to choose which branch the scent was strongest on. Also, the 50 centimeter length of the Y branches were so short that any snake could easily find the source or direction of the chemical after just a few flicks. It does not address the question of actual scent trailing behavior and how individual signs of the forked tongue work. But many other studies have used long, complex trails with frequent and unpredictable curves, and those conclusively show that that snakes do, in fact, smell in stereo, using variance in scent concentration between the forks for chemical edge detection for scent trailing. You don't actually need a fork tongue to do this, or any tongue for that matter. Just watch a dog sniffing along back and forth. They are identifying the edges and concentration of a trail. They do it by sampling multiple points sequentially, as opposed to simultaneously like a snake does, but it's the same principle. The advantage of the snake style, simultaneously, is really all about efficiency. Neat, eh? How snakes smell is pretty awesome, I think you'll agree. Also included in my group of pretty awesome are these folks here. These are some of my patrons on Patreon and their support makes videos 
and their support makes videos like this possible, even though Fingers endeavors to make it not so. You folks are awesome. Thank you for all you do. My patrons get early access to my videos, behind the scenes stuff, ugh. Extra bloopers, there are bloopers at the end of my video, did you know? The ones with fingers generally have more bloopers. And starting with this video, I will answer one of my patrons' questions on every video. Today's patron question is from Nathaniel C. I don't know if that should be Nathaniel C or K Nathaniel or K Nathaniel. I'm sorry if any of those are wrong, um, but would you mind letting me know what the right one is? And they ask, if you could keep only a single species of reptile, what would you keep? If it is only one reptile, like, out of my collection, it would be either Jub Jub or Hobbs. It's hard to choose between the two of them. But it would be one of... Stop that! <laughs> but it would be one of them. And if it was only one species, uh, garter snakes. Uh, there's, like, dozens of species of garter snakes. You gotta narrow that down. Mm -hmm. Garter snakes. But, but which species of garter snake? They're all garter snakes. Oh, okay. You're not gonna answer that, are you? I think I did. Thanks to K Nathaniel, Nathaniel, or K Nathaniel for that great question. If you would like to lend your support and see what kinds of perks you get and maybe get your question answered, head on over to patreon.com slash all Canadian reptile girl. Thanks. Fingers, don't you dare touch that mic. <laughs> so how are you feeling after today's video? Did you know that so much of the common knowledge about how snakes smell was less than authentic. Some snakes also make use of their tongue for signaling and communication as well as a tool to help with smelling. Let me know if that's a topic you want me to cover down the road. Mm. Oh, and lizard tongues, they get far weirder too. Let me know if that's something you'd like me to talk about. My thanks again to Dr. Kurt Schwank for all of his expertise, footage, and photos. And thank you all for watching and for hitting that like button. You did hit that like button, right? And you're obviously subscribed. Until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye. Would you, would you stop? No. No. He's so expressive. <laughs>